So, we are on it now. We are looking at Intro to Calculus, Chapter 8. Now, this is a very, very, very important topic, okay, because it will lead into a lot of work that you do in the HSC course, okay. Now, just like the, the, in, the heading, Intro, okay, this is only an introduction, okay, so basically what we going to achieve this chapter is understanding what calculus is, first and foremost, okay, and also looking at some general rules, and then you will apply these rules to your work in the HSC course, okay, so things like sketching accurate graphs, okay, in uh, real life um, problems in the world when we're looking at how things change with respect to time. There's a lot of um, physics-based works. Is there anyone here do not do physics? So this chapter will highly supplement your physics work and helping your understanding in the, to the uh, topics relevant to that. All right, so... Calculus involved differentiation, which is a process that works on most functions. So we were going to do functions, however, uh, we'll get this done so that the extension one students can get the next section done. Just a bit all over the place with the notes in the moment because my two weeks away um, has required a bit of out of line and order. Okay, so remember the definition of a function. Okay, so we had the we did talk about it. We draw a vertical line. Okay, and if it cuts the graph at more than one point, then we don't have a function. Okay, so you're thinking about your graph that you sketch. Okay, so for example, a parabola, vertical line test there, and you will cut the parabola once at any place you do a vertical line. Okay, um, that will be defined as a function. Okay, a example where it's not a function, we have a circle. Okay, you draw a vertical line, it can touch the circle into two places, so the circle itself is not defined as a function. Okay, and that is important because we need to have an actual function to be able to perform the work involved in calculus. So the whole point of differentiating function is to find the gradient of a tangent to that function at a specific point. One use of this is finding the equation of the tangent in uh, so for a specific function. So on a graph. The gradient will represent the rate of change. Okay, so there's three words you're going to hear a lot in this topic now and in your HSC course, um, referring to a lot of how things change over time. So we will talk about the relation of how one thing changed with respect to the other. All right, so page 58. All right, 8.1, we will talk about the gradient first. Right, so, gradient of a straight line, so we have done this in Chapter 7, finding uh, the gradient of a line by putting it into the formula, m equals y2 take away y1 all over x2 take away x1. Okay, we're looking further from that now. So, the gradient of a straight line, so I'm just reading the notes here, gives the rate. Okay, so a rate is the comparison between two different variables. Okay? So, for example, speed is a rate, okay, because you're comparing the distance travelled in a time taken. You're comparing two different things, so that will be a rate, okay. When you go to the supermarket, if you go to the supermarket, okay, and you purchase um, a kilo of fruits, okay, and you pay for that by per kilo, okay, so you can do a comparison of the weight of the fruit with the cost of the fruit, and that is another example of a rate. You're comparing two different variables, okay? So, let's look at some examples there. Example A. Right, so the graph shows the average distance travelled by a car over time. We need to find the gradient and describe it as a rate. So, you all got your L's? Am I correct? P's? Nice. So, everyone has their L's? 
Yeah. yeah. Are they all driving a car? I've got a family on the but I've never been in Have you got your L? Right, so the rest of you, right, you're driving a car, you're travelling at a certain speed, okay, particularly around the speed zones around Tamworth, a lot of 50 zones there, okay, so we need to look at the average, dish, uh, sorry, find the gradient and describe it as the rate for the information on the graph. So, to calculate the gradient of any straight line, how do we work that out? Okay, we use our gradient formula, y2, take away y1. So, in gradient in short is the change of vertical rise compared to the horizontal run. So, in other words, it is rise over run. Okay, how high or down, how low something goes in relation to how uh, by the run is. Okay? So, we have... Um, the points following points, we of course have the origin, okay, where the graph starts, that'll be the most sensible point you can pick, because you need to pick two points on this um, line, and the only other information given to there is going to be 5, so we go along first, for your coordinates, go along and then you go up, 5 and 400, okay. So I'm going to make this x2, y2, and this one can be x1, y1. Okay, so consider it as your x, y graph. We have everything still the same, just labelled differently because we are graphing time and distance. Alright, so equals whoops, 400, take away 0, over... <coughs> Take away zero. So 400 divided by 5, 5 times what equals 400? 20. No. No. 5 times 80. 80. 8 5 is 40, so 80 times 5 is 400. Right, so the gradient is 80. What does that tell us in context to what's on the diagram? What do we call the rate of distance with respect to time? Speed. Speed. So we found the gradient. The so gradient is the positive 80 and describe it as the rate. So the rate is the speed of the uh, average distance travelled by a car. Speed of the car. So in five hours, this car has travelled 400 kilometres, okay, at an average speed of 80 kilometres per hour. So 80 times 5 will give you 400 kilometres there. Okay, and technically this should be average speed. Okay, so in real life situations, you won't get that consistency with your speed over five hours. Okay, I can't think of anywhere where you could possibly do that. Okay, but we're looking at the principle of what's happening in the diagram. You want to be going any faster than what? Twenty kilos or twenty kilometers. Unless, of course, the average speed was lower, you might be able to achieve a consistency in the speed. Or the distance travelled is lower. All right, B. The graph shows the number of cases of flu reported in a town over several weeks. Find the gradient and describe it as a rate. So what two points can I use there for my gradient? Zero, fifteen, and ten, zero. Okay, remember your order of your coordinates is important. But just like your x's and y's, the x's are your horizontal point, and the y's are the, uh, sorry, the x is in the horizontal direction, and the y's in the vertical direction. All right, so the gradient. Um, 
doesn't really matter. Let's go x1, y1, x2, y2. Technically that should be called T2, T1 and N2, N1, but anyway. We'll look past that for the time being. So that's a 0, take away 15, over 10, take away 0. So we have negative 15 on 10. And remembering, we always have fractions simplified down to simplest form. Okay? So we have factors of 5, so we've got negative 3 over 2, which is the same as negative 1 and a half, 1.5. Okay, so we have found the gradient of that line. Now we need to describe it as the rate. So what is that gradient telling us? Decreasing what? Mm -hmm. The number of blue cases is decreasing by one point five. Times 100, okay, because of the scale on the side. So it's 15 up there, but it says the number of cases are hundreds times 100, okay, um, per week. All right, so for example, there's the, uh, the flu endemic coming, uh, come and gone sort of thing. Okay, at the start of the season, there's a number of cases that's been reported and there were quite a high number of cases being reported. Okay, and then um, people who work on vaccination and that sort of stuff have to create the correct, um, correct combinations of the elements and stuff that they put in the food. All right, and then they'll be modelling this, okay? So in terms of getting data from the number of reported cases against the vaccinations that have been sent out, and this is the sort of information that they would like to see, okay? Not just that it's decreasing, but by how many, okay? So if it's going very, very slowly, for example, they might need to change the, um, the process of how they make the vaccination, okay? Or they may need to change something completely different. All right, and of course, if this was an inc increasing gradient, okay, and they were mod well, um, graphing the number of flu cases with the number of vaccinations that they have um, given out, okay, and the gradient is increasing, so there's more people getting flu, all right, so that's going to tell them that what they're giving to people is not the correct um, vaccination to limit the number of flu cases, okay, and that will come up to lots of other problems, okay, including um, people staying in hospitals and that sort of stuff, all right, when you talk about overcrowded hospitals, this is sort of the data that they will need to look at in terms of managing all the bits and pieces associated with it. Any question? Okay, so what we've just done is we calculated gradient to look at a rate. Okay, so we've already looked at the rate of speed, okay, by looking at the average speed of the distance travelled um, in the time taken. And we're looking at the second rate of the number of cases of flu uh, being reported and uh, the time that that gets reported. Okay, so there are two things you're comparing two different variables, so that is a rate. <coughs> right, gradient of the curve. Two tables below, so the two graphs below show the distance that a bicycle travels over time. One is a straight line graph, and the other is a curve. Okay, so the graph on the left, we have the number of kilometres travelled over the time taken. So we can see at the end, for in four hours, the bicycle had travelled 20 kilometres. Okay, the graph on the right, we're also travelling for four hours, uh, riding for four hours, and we have covered the same distance. Okay, so we have covered the 20 kilometres as the first graph has suggested. All right. So, let's have a look at the questions below. Is the average speed of the bicycle the same in both cases? 
Yeah. Okay, because in four hours they have both achieved the 20 kilometre mark. All right. What is different about the speed in the two graphs? Okay. And then the one that kind of than yep. Speed, then okay. So we see the first one is consistent with the speed. Okay. So since uh, time dot in four hours, you are managing a successful speed consistently right through. So that, however, in the second one, like both there, it has a lot slower going. Okay. But in the middle, you are really reaching high speeds there. Okay. When you compare distance travelled and time taken in that section. But when you get up to the towards the end of the four hours, we're starting to slow back down again for the average speed. Okay. How could you measure the speed in the second graph at any one time? So. Yep, we could do that. Compare speeds in each hour. What else could we do? What have we talked about so far this lesson? Yep, by finding the gradient. So how could I use this concept into the graph on the right? What could I do? In principle, not mathematically. Is there only one tangent for the curve on the right? What's the definition of a tangent? It touches a circle at one point, okay, but now we're uh, extending that to curve. Okay, so a tangent is a line that touches a curve at one point. There's only one, are you sure? at that specific point, okay? There's actually technically infinite number of gradients on that curve, okay? So ignore the gradient when it gets extended and yes, it might touch another point on the curve, but at that specific point, okay? Where it touches, it doesn't cut through, it just touches, all right? If I were to calculate the gradient at one specific point, that would give me the rate of change at that specific point. Okay, so for example, if I take it at two hours, okay, so I'll go vertically up until I hit the graph, draw the tangent so it touches that point at only one point, and then calculate the gradient of that line. Okay, and that will tell me the speed travelled at that time, wouldn't it? Because you're comparing the rise over the run. So in other words, you are comparing the, travel, uh, the distance travelled with the time taken. Okay. So in relation to the gradient of the second graph, um, does it change? So if I were to take gradients at different points on the graph, would the gradient va value change? Yeah. Okay, because we talked about the graph going, uh, the speed is slower, and then we increase the speed when we've got the evidence of that curve coming in and it's getting more and more vertical. All right, that would suggest that the bike at that point is travelling at a higher speed, correct? Okay, but at the end of the four hours, we're starting to still have a positive speed, I think we're still travelling a distance, but that overall speed is getting um, back to a more level, more horizontal, so you're actually slowing down, but still travelling, okay? So, you have started thinking about calculus. Okay, what is the rate of change of each point on the curve and how they different how do they differ from each other? Okay, so we talked about the values of the gradient. If we were to plot the gradient to touch the curve at um, at different points at only one point, okay, we will see the value of the gradient changing. Okay. So a tangent is at a point is a straight line that touches the curve only once at that specific point. Okay, a secant cuts through two points over the page. 
Right, so those who wish, you all did circle geometry, didn't you? That makes it easy. All right, so when we did circle geometry, all right, we looked at tangent, okay, with a straight line that touches the circle at only one point, and now we're extending that to um, a general curve. All right, so looking at your diagram, we had the point of contact for the top left curve, we have the tangent at that topmost line, okay, only touches the curve at one point, but below we have a secant, and it goes through the circle at two different points, okay? That's the difference between a tangent and a secant. The graph on the top right, okay? So up the top we have a secant, it goes, it goes through two points on the curve, but the one below we have a tangent because at the point of contact, which is um, on the, in the third quadrant, okay, it only touches at one point. Uh, and this is what we're looking at in this topic, we're looking at how that um, value of the gradient of that tangent change over time and what information that will provide for us. So each curve have, so can have an infinite, so each curve does have an infinite number of tangents. Okay, so you get a contact point, you draw a straight line that touches that point of the curve one spot. Okay, and we're thinking about an infinite number of tangents. Right, any questions so far? Any food for thought? Anything you're querying, thinking about? Is my brain going to apply itself by the end of calculus? Say that again, sorry? Is my brain going to apply itself by the end of this problem? We'll see how we go, eh? Mm -hmm. Am I doing that good a job explaining everything we've covered so far? You haven't got any thoughts about anything at all? I can't be doing that good a job. We're, we're getting there. We've done two examples of the introduction. <laughs> we're getting there. We are getting there. Uh, if there's no further questions, we'll go on to the next section to continue explaining it. All right, gradient function. So we all know what a parabola looks like. It is your graph of your quadratic equation. Okay, so consider the graph of y equals x squared below. Determine the value of the gradient of the tangent at each point. Okay, so I want you to actually do this in your notes because... I want you to put the values down the space that I've provided here and you're going to graph on the next page, okay? So that's why I've provided that for you. Right, gradient function. Find the value of the gradient of the tangent at each point. So... Okay, so unless we have a vertical line itself, all right, a line will always be a function because any line apart from the vertical line itself will always, any vertical line will only touch a line at one point. So what you need to do is select two points on, your, um, on the line, form the right angled triangle, okay, and then calculate the gradient for that specific point. So... I've got A, B, C, and D, all right? And at the top of the lines, I have labelled them A, B, uh, where's C? No, C is the horizontal line of the axis, sorry. Oh, it's part of the curve. And D. All right, let's calculate A. What are two points, clear points on the line of A? Five nine, and what were the boys saying, sir? One one one. No, yes. One one. Yep. All right. So, between those two points, please, can anyone please draw a right angle triangle? Okay. So you got the parabola. Parabola. You got line A doing something like this. 
Alright, now between those two points on that, can we please form a right angle triangle, let's say? Underneath the line. Yep, line there. So 5, 9, plot the point, 1, 1, plot the point, okay, and dot your right angle triangle underneath the curve. So x2, y2, x1, y1. So the gradient at the line A, that's that notation, and the gradient in a subscript of the line A, is going to be 9, take away 1, over 5, take away 1. So 8 over 4, which is 2. Alright, so down the bottom there, underneath the graph, I've got M of A, M of B, M of C, and M of D. Can you please put 2 on M of A? So line B, so we have a more steep line there, so the contact point of B at 2, 4. So I suggest you use that point. 2, 4 with the contact point of the line B at the point B on the parabola. What's another point we could use? Which one is B? There's two lines going It'll be 1, 0. Which one B? So you got the um, it's a, it's a line. yeah, because it's part of the curve as well. So in the fourth quadrant, where the line is, starts in the bottom of the fourth quadrant yeah. and goes straight up. And that's line B. Three. All right. So one zero and two four. Can we plot those two points, please? Like dot the point and then form your right angle triangle. Alright, so now we have a more sharper curve. So some of like that, not quite accurate, but plot those two points and then dot your right angle triangle there for me, please. Okay, so this is how we calculate the gradient. We find, we make right angle triangles with the two point and graph them. So x2, y2, x1, y1. Do we expect this value of the gradient to be greater or smaller than 2? Greater, because it's more steep. Okay. The gradient of B is y2, take away y1, over x2, take away x1. How do you know which um, coordinate to use where? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because if you consistent with the order, it just make this, these negatives and negatives and make it a positive over here. Okay? So um, the question was what if uh, you made this x1, y1, x2, y2? Okay, it does not matter, okay? As long as you're consistent, okay, if they both end up turning to be negative, the two negatives cancel to be positive. Okay? So you'll get the same answer no matter the order you use as long as you're consistent. Okay, so don't use uh, y2 over y1 and then go x1, take away x2. Alright, that's not consistent. Alright, so 4 take away 0 is 0, 2 take away 1 is 1, so the gradient of B is 4. Okay, so down here, let's put a 4. Yep. So we're calculating the gradient at the specific point on the graph. Alright, C. So it is the, at the turning point on the bottom parabola. Alright, so what are two points we could use? Zero, zero. Zero, zero, point of contact. What else? Um, hey, anything, anything on the x-axis. Alright, so one comma zero. Alright, we can put any point on the x-axis because the tangent is actually the x-axis itself. Alright, so x x1, y1, x2, y2. 
All right, doesn't matter. You can call this X2, Y2. You can call this X1, Y1. As long as the consistency is there, you will get the same answer at the end. Is everyone following what we're doing? Yep. All right, so the gradient at C is Y2, 0, take away Y1, which is 0. And then X2, take away X1, 1, take away 0. 0 over 1. Zero times or divide by any number apart from zero itself, okay, is zero. So a horizontal line always has gradient zero, okay? So uh, M gradient C, put zero, please. All right, D, so you're up in the top end of the second quadrant of what we can see on the graph there. Okay, so we've got the point of contact minus 3, 9. And what is another clear point? Minus 2, 3. Minus 2, 3. Yep. Now, you can pick any other points there. You don't have to pick these two. As long as they are two points on the line, you'll always get the same gradient. Now, with the gradient at C, we can't draw a triangle. Okay, because there is no rise that we can go. Okay, however at D, with those two points, or whatever two points you have selected, draw the triangle um, below the curve. Draw the triangle below the curve between the two points you've selected. And then consistent with your maths. So three take away more, oh sorry, three take away nine over negative two take away a negative three. Right, watch your signs. So minus six over minus two plus three, which is one. Right. And of course, when we have a line going down, downhill, when sloping, when going from left to right and goes downhill, we have a negative gradient. Okay. So when you go left to right on a line that goes up the hill, like A and B, right, you have a positive gradient. So down the bottom, let's put minus 6. The purpose of what you're doing is to graph what's called the gradient function. Okay, so on the bottom of page 59, now graph the following below. The x-coordinate of the above points at A, B, C and D. And on the y value, we will plot the value of the gradient. Okay, so... In your graph that I have already provided for you, in your books. Okay, so on top of page 60. You'll see I've got X's and Y's there. Can anyone watch? On Y, can we put a dash? Like apostrophe. On the Y. And that is, will tell you some information as we go on in the topic. So, the line A. Okay. So, the coordinates, so the x value is A, so where the point, the x value of the line where it touches the curve, okay, so at 1, 1 on your graph, there's the point of contact of the line at A, at capital A there, alright, so the x value is going to be 1, and the y value is the value of the gradient of the line of A. Okay, so reading down your table are your four numbers on the bottom. The gradient was two. Okay, so that's what you're plotting. Okay, so one, two, plot that point. Right, the line B. 
the x value of the point of contact of line B to the parabola is what? The x value, so it's 2. All right, so you go to the point of contact, read straight down for the x value. And what is the value of the gradient at for the line B? 4. four. Okay, the calculator is 4. So plot the point, 2, comma 4. Okay, so on the grid that I'll provide for you there. All right, line C. What is the x value of the point of contact to the parabola? Zero. Zero. And what is the gradient? Zero of that curve. Is everyone following what we're doing? Uh, hey. In principle, what we're doing, not why we're doing it. Zero, zero. Anything, anyone noticing anything so far? Straight on. Okay. D. What is the x value of the point of contact? Minus three. Minus three. What is the value of the gradient? Minus six. Minus three. Minus six. Nice. That with your rulers, rule those points. Okay, you've all just done calculus now. You're all having fun, we're all having a good time. Except Mikhail, I should give me the rolled eyed expression. It's really easy, so he's like, oh, he's not Okay, so what do you notice about the line? Apart from the point, the point that it's straight. Yep, okay, yep. Mm -hmm. What else do we notice? Going back to your parabola. Okay, so the parabola was something like that. What can you tell me about the gradient of any point on the positive x-axis for the parabola? What can you tell me about the gradient? Okay. Yep, what else do we notice? Go the other way. If you go to the negative x values of the parabola, mm -hmm. what can you tell me about the gradient at any point on the negative x axis side? Okay. If I were to pick a point and draw the tangent, okay, it would be something like that, wouldn't it? Poorly drawn, but anyway. What if I pick this point here? What can you tell me about those two tangents in terms of the gradient? Very generalised, not specific. Hey. Yes. All right, let's go to the other side. Let's pick a negative x value, that's the point of the curve, and draw the tangent. So, isn't it? Like that. All right, if I pick another point on the negative side of the origin and draw the tangent, it would be something like that, wouldn't it? What can oh, you tell me about same. those two gradients? The They're the same. Okay. Uh, for, yes, they will for this type of curve, yes. It's like really obvious. I want a very obvious answer. <laughs> Not that obvious, but...
What can you tell me about the first two lines of John? What can you tell me about the second set of lines of John? They're negative. Okay, that's what I needed. So, on the right of the origin, the line... All right, so on the right of the line, the gradient, okay, so next to it, let's put a M. It's going to be a notation for gradient now, Y dash. All right, all these are positive points, aren't they? Yes. All right, if you go to the left, okay, we have negative gradient. So as you go to the left, the gradient value is Negative, all right? So if you're plotting the x value against the gradient to the right of the origin, we have positive gradient, okay? To the left of the origin, we have negative gradient, okay? This is what you're sketching, what's called the gradient function, okay? So, underneath, the notes underneath your graph. What do you have graphed is the gradient function. So when the gradient is positive, the gradient function itself is above the x-axis. In other words, you're getting a positive value for your y part of the point. Okay, considering it as your xy graph. So, when the gradient is zero, whether m is zero, the gradient function is on the x-axis. Okay, so the point C had a gradient zero, and at that point we have on the x-axis itself for the value of x specifically. When M is negative, the gradient function is below. So you get all the negative values down here as you go to the negative values of X. Okay? So, note that you don't need to do the detailed graphing process like we've just done to answer the question involving sketching the gradient function. Okay, so an accurate representation of the general layout of the gradient function will suffice. All right. Any questions on that? Who's completely lost? I can't understand it. Yes. Who's gotten some? Who's getting some sort of understanding of what's going on? Vague understanding. Very good understanding. Where's Robin when you need him? Right. So, the process of finding the gradient of a tangent is called differentiation. Have you heard that word before? Yeah. Yep, and that's what we're doing here. The resulting function is called the derivative. Right, five minutes. Let's have a look at the graph over this side. Right, on page 61. Okay, so I provided the graph for you. And underneath is a plane, uh, an empty number plane. So nothing on it. That's where you're going to sketch. All right. Now, I couldn't get this general light, uh, generated on the computer. So that's X. And can you please put a dash with Y, Y dash. All right. On the, second, the bottom one. And then above it, you've had this graph here. So you've got X and Y. And you've got the curve doing something along the lines of this. Okay. Right. So what we need to do is look at this curve in terms of where, uh, which between which x value is the curve's gradient. Gradient at uh, the point on the curve is going to be negative. Where it's going to be positive, and where it's going to be zero. Okay. So let's start with zero. Who thinks they can identify at what point can I draw the tangent onto the graph? that I'll have a tangent with gradient zero. Okay. Isn't zero just any? Isn't zero just infinite? Would it be, would it be the peak and the Yes. All right. So if I were to draw a horizontal line, remember the gradient of zero is your horizontal line. Uh, sorry, don't draw the line right across. Say yay long there. Yeah. Okay, if I draw the tangent at those two points, where they turn, I'll get a gradient of zero, just like part C in the parabola. 
Right, let's call this capital A and capital B here. So with reference to those, at what parts of the curve in respect to A's and B's, okay, on the graph, will I always have a tangent with a positive gradient? What part of my curves? If I pick this point here where the tangent is zero, if I go to the right of B at that point, if I were to draw the tangent, okay, generalised, right, they are all going to be positive from that point on. Yes? Mm -hmm. Alright. Where else is that going to also happen? On the other side of A. Alright, so if I draw tangent here and here, if I were to draw the actual tangent, they would be positive. Wouldn't they? Yeah. What about the other direction? What about negative? Between. between. Okay, so if I were to draw the tangent between A and B, I will have negative values of the gradient. Okay, because of the way the line slopes. So, in the graph underneath, dot a line vertically down. You are now sketching the gradient function. You are sketching how the gradient changes over time. Okay, with your rulers, good. Uh, and also at the point B, which is pretty much where the, um, the origin is, for those two points where we had defined the zero gradient, mean they're going to be values of zero. In other words, they're going to be on the x-axis itself. Okay, now between A and B, it all has a negative gradient. Okay, on the right of B, I have all positive values of the gradient. On the left of A, I also have all positive values of the gradient. Any suggestion on how I'm going to graph that concept, like along the line of what I've done for the parabola for that example? Any ideas what the graph is going to look like? So? Right, so we've got a negative gradient between A and B, correct? So between A and B, I've got negative values happening. Good. Okay, so to the right of B, I've got a positive gradient. And to the left of A, I also have a positive gradient in terms of the graph itself is above the x-axis. Okay, so as you go to the right of the origin, where you've got the zero gradient, as you go further and further to the right, this value gets larger and larger. So in other words, the gradient value, as you go further and further to the right, is going to be greater and greater as you go. All right? As you go further to the left of A, the value of the gradient of the tangent is also going to go greater and greater. Let's do another example before we get really excited or we start crying. Second one. Actually, we'll do this next lesson. So, right. That's right. All right, make sure you bring those notes every lesson. I know not all people are doing that. You will need to do that for this topic. You have a lot of diagrams to look at, a lot of things to write in your books. Okay. And we will continue on this next lesson.